I'm back at Seaford, fishing high wall stretch between Edinburgh Road and the Buckle. I've cast out my first rod of a two snud sole rig and I'm in the process of setting up my second. And that's a promising start, I bite straight away. There's something on and no prizes for guessing what it'll be. Yes, it's a place. Although this rig is designed for soles, with panelled small hooks and short snuds, it catches more place than it does soles. But who's complaining? Although it's not huge, that's a great start. Bunningstead Prom runs in front of a high wall, and my first session is at a mark closer to Edinburgh Road. I've attached a free hook short snud clip down rig to my second rod and that's my main place rig. But I'm also baiting up a free hook short wire boom rig as a standby. I've just put ragworm on this one but I will also be using blow lug on my other two rigs. So that's a boom rig prepared and it's attached to a breakaway lead with wires. My other two rigs are breakaway continental pyramid style leads. There's a little bit of wind today, so at some point with tide I'm expecting there to be a fairly strong pull, so I might have to change my leads over. It's a spring tide, so we just have to wait and see how strong that tidal pull is going to be. Now that we're into summer, I'm back to using my cool bag and my blow lug is stored in here. It's a couple of days old and it's been refrigerated so I prefer to keep that in paper. If I dug it the day before or the same day, I would be carrying it in a bucket with a little bit of water and I'll be replacing that soon after starting fishing. Today, however, it's not that warm and I've used up all of my smaller bits on the Thames the day before. So most of the lug room in this paper are of larger size and they haven't been stored in water. I'll put these on the bottom two snuds of my clip down rig, having already put ragworm on the top snud. The rig I've already cast out has been pulled out of line a little bit and the tidal pull is from left to right so I'll be casting my second rig somewhere towards the left. If I find that both rigs are being pulled out of position then I'll change the lead on one of those to make sure it's got wires and that's one that'll be cast up drift. As it happens, if I could cast out, I notice there's a boat on the one that's already out there. And it's place number two, this time on the lower snood. After returning the fish, we'll have a quick pan round the area, then a closer look at my gear. The chalk cliffs past Splash Point are in the distance, then you can see the start of a high wall. I've positioned myself between Edinburgh Road and the start of the beach huts. The road above is Marine Drive and there's free parking all the way along this stretch. In the distance is New Haven and the west arm of the harbour. I'm using my Comic Zero 7 rods which are 4.6 metres in length and there's a South End Duck Lugworm and Ragworm from Tools and Tackle in New Haven. I've already mentioned my rigs and you'll be pretty familiar with these if you've seen any of my other Seaford videos. Although I've got many place rigs made up with beads and blades, I'm not a big fan of using them at Seaford. Preferring just to use plain rigs with maybe just one bead acting as a bait stop. If I was after specimen place, I'd probably be using attractors 
but if there aren't any about, then there's not much point in fishing for them, and I've been led to believe that it's all small place here at the moment. So the rigs I am using gives me a chance to catch fish other than place, and soles in particular. Now that I've got both rods out and setting down for the next bite, I just run through a location of details. The map shows the main venues from New Haven to the north, running to Splash Point in the south, then zooms in to locate the Bunningstead Prom stretch. I've produced videos covering most of these venues, with Frankie's perhaps being my favourite, closely followed by Edinburgh Road, and of course the Buckle, which tends to be the most popular part of this area. The high wall runs the whole length of the Prom between Buckle Drive and Edinburgh Road. Zooming in on the prom and high wall area, I've named the nearby roads and then I'll focus in on the two spots that I fished for this video. These were either side of a row of beach huts, but there isn't much to choose between any part of this area. Well, it didn't take very long for the next bite. A smaller place this time for the sole rig. I can now tell it's going to be a pretty hectic day. I was a little bit concerned about the strength of the wind, but with water being very clear, I can still see what a place are still feeding. Conditions aren't rough enough, and the water's not cut enough to prevent them from having a go. I've also started fishing at what's probably the best time for place, in my opinion. That's half an hour before the top of the tide. If you don't catch at this point, then anywhere between half an hour and an hour and a half down is also a good bet. I prefer to fish the ebb. I know many will disagree with me, but that's when I think that most fish feed. Having said that, it is possible to catch place at any state of the tide at Seaford. Time to give a short wild boom rig a go. This rig was still cast a good distance, but not as far as the clip down rigs. Didn't take long for the boom rig to get into the action.
however, that's the smallest one so far. button clip down rig but it's not very confident so dragging the bait often produces a better response as in this case just got to be a bit more careful not to get my line caught around a tripod The tide is ebbing now and some nasty looking layer of clouds have descended. It's getting a bit chilly but the bites keep coming. There's a little bit of weed in the water now and some of it's getting stuck to the line so I need to make sure that there's none stuck in the tip ring otherwise that might cause break off. That's the first fish that's come off on the way in. However, if I could recast the rod, I'll get a bite on the other one. Yet another place to the soul rig.
tides over an hour down and I get another place of reasonable size. This one however is deeply hooked so it needs to be disgorged. be okay to use an ordinary disgorger since my hooks aren't penalled here. However, I do like to use long nose forceps for this job. The fish is unharmed so I could go back, even if it risks getting my feet wet. That one was one of a few that was caught on lugworm. At Seaford I find I catch a lot more on ragworm, however a slightly better fish do come to lugworm, and if you're after specimen ones then black lug seems to be the bait, however I don't seem to catch a lot on it. So as before I'm rebaiting my free hook clip down rig with lugworm on the bottom two snuds and ragworm on the top. The ragworm still seems to be okay here, so it just needs to be pushed up the hook off a bend. Having rebaited, it's now time to start moving down the beach. It was a bit of a wait for the next fish, but that came to the top snud of a sole rig. And that was the only fish before I needed to make my next move down the beach. By this time, the mist is starting to roll in off the sea. It's not quite fog conditions, but there's a fair amount of water in the air and it is affecting my filming. It's not, however, affecting the fishing. The place kept coming in for another hour or so, but now mainly on a boom rig and generally of smaller size. An enjoyable and successful session with 12 plates in all. Quite a few of them were of sizeable proportions but they all went back. 
A week later and I was back for some more. This time I parked above the prom and walked down the steps to where I'm fishing. I chose to be the buckle side of the beach huts. Same gear and bait as before, but I was hoping to catch something other than place. This time I've opted to use a long wire boom rig instead of a sole rig, but the other two rigs are the same as before. The short wire boom rig costs further than the long wire one, but since there is only wind today, that's not going to make a lot of difference. Once again, my ragworms from the ever reliable tools and tackle, and my blow lug is self dug. This time I've made sure there's some smaller ones amongst the bigger ones. Being a week on, these are neap tides, so I'm not expecting tidal pool to be as it was before. It's very humid, with no wind. The water's still clear, but there's quite a lot of scum on the surface close in. I've arrived a bit earlier, some two hours before the top of the tide, so I'll be fishing either side of high water. Once again, what tidal pool there is, is running left to right. I felt like to be close to the water's edge. I think it was a bit of a mistake setting up this close. I should really have been on the slope of that shingle, or better still, on the strand line at the top. The swash is pretty strong today and is reaching all the way up to my gear. This will necessitate an early move up the shingle, which is time wasted at the start of this session. Since I've only really just casted them out, I'm leaving my rigs out there, opening the bail arm of my reels and walking up with my rods.
even though there's only been a yard mackerel showing here recently, I think conditions are ideal today. So I'm hedging my bets and setting up a rod for, to fish for them. I now use my Comic Arcadia for feathering since it's very light, but at the same time it's still stiff enough and strong enough to put in a full house of mackerel. I team it up with a Fox FX9 reel with mono. To be on the safe side, I'm opting to use the stiffest tip. However, if I could finish threading the line for the rod rings, I'd get a bite on one of my bait rods. It doesn't develop, so I decide to drag the rig. If there isn't any wind, or not much wind when feathering, I prefer to use a lure rather than weights at the bottom of a string of feathers. But before I could choose one, I noticed my rod tip bouncing again. This time it's a bit more confident and I strike into a fish. Or rather two fish. That's a great start. A double shot on a long wire boom rig. The better of a two small place was on the top boom, while a smaller one was on the bottom. So Ragwim caught a better sized fish this time. Back to setting up the rod for feathering. I'm going for daylight feathers on relatively small, red, size 4 hooks. I like to use these or sabiki type feathers if I'm not expecting large mackerel to be around. These will still catch the larger ones, but you've got a better chance of catching joey mackerel or scared using these. I'm not all that hopeful though, so I don't think the water temperatures have been high enough yet. I think there needs to be a lot more bait fish around before the mackerel move in. lure of about an ounce or an ounce and a half is good enough. I do like Dexter Wedge type lures. These have caught me a lot of garfish whilst feathering for mackerel, but any streamlined metal lure would do. If I'm not getting the distance I need, then I will swap over to an Arlissi Bomb type lead, but if I can get away with it, I do prefer to use a lure, because that gives you another option of catching another fish. Now that I'm ready, but before I could try that, I've got a fish on the other rod which I haven't pulled in just yet. It's a small place on the top snood of a clip down rig.
Having just cast out, I get bite straight away. The rod tip continues knocking, and I think I might have caught a fish on the drop. If that's the case, then there could well be mackerel out there. However, I'm a bit disappointed to find it's a small place. It must have taken a bite as soon as it hit the bottom. And it's woofed it right down, so it needs disgorging. While I'm getting plenty of bites, I'll postpone the feathering. This fish is taken immediately upon dragging the bait. Dragging the bait works yet again here. The long wire boom rig seems to be working really well today. It's nearing the top of the tide, so this is a good time to start using the feathers.
I had a few chucks, but there was nothing doing. I'll rest it for now, but I have a few more goes later on. In the meantime, I'll see if I can try and catch something different on the bait rods. And that looks something different. Three little sharp taps. That doesn't look like a play spike to me. Strike into it and I do feel like there's something on. And indeed it is something different. It's a round fish and not a flat fish. And that's a sure sign that we're now into summer. It's a gurnard. Not very big, but it does make a pleasant change from catching place. but the place haven't gone away just yet. In fact, as the tide starts to ebb, the place come on even stronger. And this is another one that needs to be disgorged. I knew that was too good to be true, a first sign of the spider crabs. Although I haven't put one in yet, this time I've come back with no bait and one of her hooks missing. Since this is my boom rig, I'm okay since I've got hooks already tied up. I've just got to find a relevant packet and replace the one that's gone, so this isn't going to waste a lot of time. I'll point out now that in this session spider crabs became a bit of a problem. I ended up losing 10 hooks to them, but I didn't pull a single one of them in. I'll have another go with the feathers, 
This time I've replaced the metal lure with an ounce and a half lead. This gets me considerably more distance. Whilst doing this, I'm still making sure that I'm looking out for any indications on my bait rods. Still nothing doing. Despite varying the distances and depth of water at which I'm fishing the feathers and the technique of bringing them in, there's still no indications of any mackerel out there. That's another different sort of bite. Quick, sharp pull round. This is on the short boom rig, so it could be something different. And it's a little smooth hound on the ragworm. Just as I cast out my clip down rig, I get another little rattle on the boom rig. Quick grab of a rod and I'm into something. Just as I put it in, my camera stops recording, so no close up with this one, but it is a black bream. It's not that big, but there's a photograph of that at the end, and it is the first one I've caught this summer. I was into another fish, straight after that bream. I carried on for a bit, and once again I ended up with 12th place. Another good session. But this time I was very pleased to have caught a few more different fish. I gave the feathering a good chance, but it didn't produce anything. But what I am happy about was to have caught the gurnard, black bream and a little smooth hound. There's still one or two parts of seafood I haven't covered yet, so I'll definitely be back later this summer for more.